All right, everybody, sorry about that little hiccup there, but let's take a look at these guys. Shall I have your periodic tables out? So how many protons, neutrons, electrons are in these things? Notice this dash is going to represent the mass of it. That's the other way of drawing it. So this would be CR52. And if I look at chromium, the whole number that's there is 24. So hopefully you can follow how those are different. Um, so chromium, looking at the periodic table, is protons equal 24. And its mass, well, I, don't, I need neutrons. So neutrons equals mass, which is 52, minus protons, minus 24, which is 28. And then I have electrons. And since this doesn't indicate a charge for anything, then electrons is the same as protons, which is 24. Okay. Oxygen dash 15. Okay. So that 15 means the mass is 15. So how many protons are there? I look at oxygen. On the periodic table, oxygen has the number, the whole number, 8. Okay. Notice this oxygen doesn't have a charge on it, so its electrons are also 8. And if its mass is 15, then 15 minus protons equals neutrons. So that means that 15 minus 8 is 7 neutrons. Neon 20. So I look at neon on the periodic table, and its protons equal 10. Its neutrons, I'm sorry, its electrons will also equal 10. Now why does it equal 10? Um, because protons equal electrons, because there's not any funny name on here. Protons, electrons, and then neutrons would be, neutrons would be mass minus protons equals neutrons. So mass is 20 minus 10 equals 10 neutrons. Potassium ion. Now potassium ion, you don't know exactly what potassium ion is yet, but potassium ion is going to be K plus 1. Okay? So it's K plus 1. Um, that means it's still potassium. So when I look at potassium, its number of protons is going to be the same. So the number of protons in potassium, the whole number from the periodic table is 19. The number of neutrons, again, this will be the same. It's mass minus protons equals neutrons. So that means it's 40 minus 19 equals 21 neutrons. Now my electrons, if it's K positive, remember, you can't change your protons. We're just going to change the electrons. So if I have 19 protons, in order to be plus 1, I need to have 18 electrons, because 19 plus negative 18 equals positive 1. Okay. Chloride. Ooh, look, I see chlorine, but this says chloride. If something ends in ide, it has a negative charge. And in this case, it's Cl negative 1. And you'll learn where that is later on, but this is Cl negative 1. So if we look at chlorine, the number of protein, proteins, protons is still the same, so it's 17. The number of neutrons, we calculate that the same, because it's the mass, 36, minus the number of protons, 17, equals 29, 19. 19 neutrons. And then my electrons, if it's negative 1, then I need to have more electrons than protons. Electrons are negative, right? So that means I need one more if it's negative one. So that means I would have 18 electrons. All right? So how many protons, neutrons, electrons are in this? So and why don't we need a bottom number? Now, we don't need a bottom number for these guys. Um, the symbol can tell us the ID number. OK. So how many protons? So right here, bam, two protons. No charge here, right? Bam, two electrons. Protons equals electrons. If it doesn't have a charge, this one will be different. And then neutrons would be mass minus protons equals neutrons. Six minus two, four neutrons. All right, protons. Bam, eight protons. Now, in this case, notice it's got a positive charge. That means I have more protons than electrons by one. So I have seven electrons. Neutrons, mass minus protons, eight neutrons. Okay. 
So, and no charge here. Protons, hello, seven protons. Electrons, no charge, so it's going to have the same, seven electrons. And neutrons is mass minus protons. Seven, 12 minus 7 is 5 neutrons. All right. So no indication of charge is made. The substance is a neutral atom. So that means protons equal electrons if it's neutral. Where does the mass in the periodic table come from? Scientists chose, notice chose, Carbon-12 to have a mass of 12 point, oh, whoa, 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 This wasn't the best choice, and if we could do the world all over again, we would, but we can't. This gave us the mass of the neutrons and protons. Neutrons and protons are close in mass, but they're not identical. We average every atom of each isotope to get the average atomic mass. To make life easy, we say a proton and a neutron weigh one atomic mass unit, which is a cheesy unit, but kind of made up again. There are three isotopes of hydrogen. Hydrogen-1, which is called hydrogen. Hydrogen-2 deuterium, hydrogen-3, tritium. If I said, what's the average mass of hydrogen? You probably would think it's 2, but it's not 2. The average mass of hydrogen is 1.001. If you look at the periodic table, I'm, you'll see I'm not lying, except for it's 1.01, pardon me, 1.01 um, AMU. So why? How could the average be shifted this far? Well, I must have lots of this, hardly any, and nearly none. Right? So if you take the average of these things that's really close to this one, you must have lots and lots and lots of that one, and the other ones don't do it, so it weights it down. So how many carbon atoms weigh 12.01? None. How likely is it to grab one boron atom weigh 10.8? By the way, 10.8 is the average mass in the periodic table. How likely is it? Impossible. Because those are averages. Okay. Naturally occurring europium, EU, consists of two isotopes, the mass of 151 and 153. Europium 151 has an abundance of 48.03 percent. Europium 153 has an abundance of 51.97 percent. What is the atomic mass of europium? Notice this is bigger than this, which means my average should be closer to this one than that one. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my masses, <coughs> pardon me, 151 times 0.4803 and get a number. Then take 153 times 0.5197. Now, why do I use a decimal form? Well, in my little hillbilly Indiana school, they told me that you never use a decimal, like the make a decimal part when you do math. You always use the, the swing the decimal over two places to do it. So let's see what my calculator will tell me. 151 times 0.4803 is 72.525. And then 153 times 0.5197 is 79.514. Now, and then I'm going to add these together. Now, I don't have to divide by 2 because these took care of dividing by how many things I have. So if I add those things together, answer plus 72.525, and I get 152.04 AMUs. Now, when I do that, I should be closer to 153 than I am to 151, and I am. But not a lot closer, because it's just a smidgen difference. So I did it right. I'm so proud of myself. Here's one where I have three different isotopes. Okay? Same deal. Notice relative abundance in this case is not in a percentage. It's in a decimal form. But it adds up to 1, which would add up to 100%. So take my uh, mass, 23 point, notice a better, better measuring device, 985, times my percentage in decimal form, 0.7870, equals something. 24.986 times 0.1013 equals something. 25.983 times 0.1117 equals something. I add them all up, or I multiply them, sorry. 23, whoops, 23.985 times 0.787 equals 18.8762. 24, whoops, 24.986 times 0.1013 is 2.5311. Notice how this is a lot less. It's a lot less because my percent abundance is a lot less. 25.983 times 0.1117. Again, should be a small-ish number, 0 0.29023. When I add all these up, because this is my biggest abundance, I would expect my answer to be closer to 24 than 26. 
So let's add them up. So answer plus 2.531, oops, 108 plus 18.876 equals 24.30, actually 31 AMUs. And notice how that's closer to 24 than the other ones because the abundance is so much greater. The difference between a weighted average and plus them up and divide. Now, my real answer is not much, but a weighted average takes into account the abundances. Okay, so on this one, you don't just add 20, you know, add this plus this plus this divided by 3. It doesn't work that way. It matters the abundances. So takes into account the abundances and uses it. And the plus them up and divide um, does not use abundances. So if you want to find the average miles per gallon of a car in the United States, it matters that there are more Ford F-150s on the road than there are, I don't know, Cadillac Eldorados. Electrons move when energy is added. Woohoo! If you add energy to it, it's going to move. A certain quantum leap. How do they move? They move by quantum leap, meaning an all or nothing leap. When electrons absorb energy, electrons jump up an energy level by quantum leap, meaning that they are at point one, then they are in point two. They do not travel in between. When electrons release energy, they fall by quantum leap. Absorbing energy makes an absorption spectrum. So if you absorb energy, so if I shoot white light at it, these spots tell you what energy is absorbed. Those specific wavelengths of light are absorbed. So the, you absorb these energies and you jump up to this high energy spot, woohoo, or in this case, these one, two, three, four, five different higher energy spots, and then eventually they're going to fall back down. And when they fall back down, they will emit those colors of light. So you'll see um, when we bust out the, oh, what do you call it, the spectral glasses, you will be able to see some of these lines that show up. Valence electrons are outer electrons. Valence means outer. Your coat is your valence clothing in the winter. Your shirt is your valence clothing in the summer. Your birthday suit is your valence level at birth. That would be your skin for those of you who don't speak old man. How many valence electrons do elements have? This is something you got to learn. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe in middle school they taught you that there's some um, eight kind of thing that's wonderful. These are the valence electrons. What about the middle ones? The middle ones, by the way, are two, 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 two. Two. Now, I'm fibbing to you a little bit, and you'll learn the truth about it later. But pretty much this is right. And for right now, it is perfect. There are two places where it's really going to be one in there. But you don't need to worry about that yet. So there you go. Review. Isotopic notation of standard notation. And standard notation can tell you the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons, and a mass, by the way. Average mass includes the abundance of elements. And cations are positive. Well, toodles.